glory. In my last video, I showed that I would talk to you about the spirit of the fear of the Lord when God revealed it to me. It came through a course of many things. Uh, the fear of the Lord uh, manifested when I was just a young believer and I showed up to this meeting and this guy Bob Edwards was preaching. I've never been in a meeting this powerful before or since. This was the most powerful meeting I've ever been in. Well, actually, there was a couple meetings, maybe a little bit close. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he preached and uh, the pockets of the Holy Spirit would manifest over here. And he's like, God's moving over here. And then they would bust out laughing. The joy was evidence that what he was saying was true because the fruit of the Spirit would manifest. There was fruit to his words because he spent time with the Holy Spirit in the secret place and manifested openly their relationship together in the open place. And so anyways, I, I'm at this meeting and then uh, oh, this lady, she, she comes up to me and prophesies and I'm shaking for like half an hour in the presence of God by the word of the Lord. Like, uh, it, was, it was just so powerful. My flesh could not handle this. I'm a newer believer. I, uh, I'm just learning all this stuff. And, and then after the, I think he came in for another service. And then he, I don't even remember what happened. I just remember I was standing in this meeting. And I think they're having prayer time or something. I don't know, man. I was just like, I just remember standing there. And there was so much power. There was too much of the power of God in the meeting. I could feel my body. My, I don't, I'm not one of those shakers, like, whoa, guards moving. No, I'm not, I don't do that. My mom used to get electrocuted like that. Not me, man. I'm not the shaker. <laughs> Anyways, but I was standing in this power and it was like, I, I got plugged into an electric socket of God and the power, it was too much. Like it was like 11. But the, the problem was, it didn't stop at 11. It kept going like 13, 14, 15. I'm like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> my legs are shaking. I put my hands down to stop my legs from shaking and my body started shaking. This is my first encounter with the power of God. The spirit of the fear of the Lord hit me. I was in this ecstasy of his peace his love, but it was too much peace. It was too much love. It was too much power. I was terrified. I was like, oh my gosh, why isn't it slowing down? Why does it keep getting stronger and I'm holding my pants? I cannot stand still. I was out of control. And I, and I th had the thought came, oh, if I think one wrong thought, if I think one lustful thought about a woman, if I, if I, if I think a swear, if I curse someone, if I have pride in my heart, this, it's too powerful, I will die. And then would God even know that one of his children were extinguished out of existence? That's how powerful it was. And I was just like, I was trembling in the presence of the living God. I was so terrified, I wanted to crawl underneath a carpet and just hide. But I can't. Everything was exposed. Uh, he could see my innermost being. He could see my thought life. I was terrified. But I didn't want it to end. But I did want it to end because I was terrified. But I've never felt so good in my life. Ugh, my flesh was dying. But my spirit was rejoicing in God my Savior. And so that was my first encounter with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I'm pretty sure that was it. Or it could have happened another thing. Uh, time uh, I was okay well I met, went to a worship meeting I'll tell you about another time I met the spirit of the fear of the Lord I guess I won't do the devotion until the next video uh, but I walked into this 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 meeting the uh, there was it seats about 4,000 and uh, it, it was packed out this Kevin Prosh was the worship leader and then uh, he's like all the Native Americans come to the front and uh, so uh, I got part native in me. I, you know, I, any excuse to feel the presence of God. You know, if that's where God's going to be moving. I want to be there. So I was the first one. I just ran out of my seat. <laughs> I'm like, man, if God's going to be moving, I want to. I want to get touched. Like I'm hungry for God. I don't care what people think. Ran to the front, 
And I look up at him, and it's like, and I come up, you know? <laughs> he's like, he just waves me up. And then all of a sudden, like he was following the Holy Spirit. And then a couple other ladies came up with me and they were to my to my left, I believe, and they're like, Shokura they're praying in tongues, but it was not like uh, there was substance to their tongues. It's like they were emotional. Um, it, it, they were so deeply moved in their hearts when they were praying in tongues to God that there was an atmosphere, so to speak. The same feeling. The power just kept going up, 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 up. And shaking again in the presence of God. A young believer, maybe a year old in the Lord, I don't know. Uh, and I started praying in tongues too because I had the gift at this time. And it was like the heavens just rolled open. Like the natural realm just rolled away. And I was, it was like looking... You know how they had those transparencies with the words and stuff when you go to those church meetings? It was like that. And I could see uh, the natural realm, but 75% was the spirit realm. And there was, a, there was a huge glowing man standing in front of me. That's the only way I can describe it. And I realized where the power was coming from. It was coming from him. And uh, I don't think it was Jesus. I think it was the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the angel of the fear of the Lord. Because I looked at him, I just felt utter dread for the fallen nature. But there was such pure, oh man, I can feel it now. There was such purity, such holiness billowing from this angel. And I was terrified, but I didn't want it to ever end. I tried to stop myself from shaking. I couldn't do it. Uh, my, my flesh just shook in the presence of God. Uh, I thought to myself, this is just an angel. This is just an angel and it's too much. How much more God dials his presence back just so that we could feel the touch. I mean, we feel the warmth of the sun and it's soothing. But if we were to take, go stand like 6,000 feet from the sun, we'd just be a crispy critter. We'd just burst into flames and be disintegrated. We need our new bodies. I was struck with a holy fear of the Lord, a purity that uh, I didn't want to think anything wicked. I didn't want to do anything wicked. All I wanted to do is serve God with a pure conscience and a pure heart and a pure mind and a pure body. Uh, the, pure, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, it's written in Psalms 19, I believe, that spirit of, the fear of the Lord is pure. And that's the impartation you get from this angel. It's like purity. Uh, uh, I just want to walk with God and I don't want to do anything wrong and I need God I, it, it just makes it gives you the realization of how much you need God to walk in purity because you cannot do anything in your own strength no matter how hard you try it's the Holy Spirit who puts to death the deeds of the flesh and then I remember a third time this is the most impactful one for me where I met the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I was up at my, you know, I would go out with my brother and we would go drinking alcohol. And I would come home and uh, I remember stealing a bike that night. I left the bike, I was drunk on alcohol. I passed out in some guy's car in his parking lot. I went to his house and slept in there. Uh, you know, I'm a brand new believer, probably about a year old in the Lord. Just a foolish virgin oh. and and I came home and I, I just and then I go to bed and I, I wake up and yeah, I go to my mom I said mom you know what I don't even feel like I fear God man I can go out and sin all I want and I just gotta flip a God forgive me prayer in Jesus name amen bam and I'm, it's done <laughs> she's like Christopher don't talk like that what? I'm telling you the truth, man. I can sin all I want and flip a God forgive me prayer and bam, it's gone. You know, 
arrogance. Like I said, man, I've been delivered a lot. <laughs> I'm still getting delivered, okay? And then uh, I was like, man, yeah, well, it's whatever. I don't feel like I fear God. I'm just being truthful. So I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to go sing some songs to him and, uh, you know, whatever. Maybe one day I'll fear God. I don't know. <laughs> so I go down the stairs and I pick up my guitar and I grab my CD and my mom's upstairs kicking the floor, praying. <laughs> Give that boy the fear of the Lord. You know, she's got her old ladies on the phone, her old friends. <laughs> they would sit there and kick devils all day long and oil the walls. And it was crazy. It used to get me so mad. Like, <laughs> so I grabbed the CD and I put it in the stereo. The first song was called Set Me on Fire. And the second song was Water. I remember this clearly because the Holy Spirit spoke to me. <laughs> It's like I grab the CD and I press play. And he's like, no, 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 Chris, play the second song. Play the second song? Okay. So I press, you know, is this even, is this you, Lord? Can I have a sign? You know, it was just an impression. I felt like God wanted me to play the second song. So I did. I pressed number two, grabbed my guitar. I knew I knew the chords. And I sat down on my, uh, I had a futon. And the song began to play. You know, and you are my God, I seek you, in a, you know, in a dry, weary land or something like that. But when it broke into the chorus, it's like, this is the, I think this is the very first time that I remember that I know that I had an open vision where it's like you're looking at a screen. Uh, like, like if the walls disappear in your house, you know, and you're, you're looking at a, it was like a movie theater inside my house. And uh, it was projected from the kingdom of heaven within me out into uh, on, on like a screen. Like you're watching an IMAX theater, like 3D movie theater thing. And then uh, and uh, in this vision, I'm watching a reoccurring dream that I had as a young boy. I think I was like about 11 years old, 10 or 11. Very young boy. And in this dream, I was, I was seated in this couch. And... Uh, I would always look down from this couch that was in the heavens and I saw all these cattle bones and there was dust everywhere and I was there was such a drawing what is going on down there I'm so high up here I can't get a good look at that and then I'd wake up screaming and my mom would come in the room when I'm like 11 years old or so and she's like oh it's just a nightmare go back to bed and then but I had to dream the same night the reoccurring night the next night I'd have the same dream. The next night I'd have the same. Every night I was having this dream. Just a nightmare. Go back to bed. And so and then the dream would progress. I'm sitting in this couch in the heavens looking down at these dead cattle bones and sand. I'm like, you know what? I got to go down there. And it looked like, you know when you have three mirrors and it goes like in eternity? Like you're going to see forever. It looked like that. I was looking down upon myself, looking down upon myself, looking down upon myself at these, the sand and death bones, cattle bones. And I, it was just, I can't take it anymore. I got to know what's down there. I can't see it from up here. And so I would jump out of my couch in the sky and I'd be land and I'd be, ah, just before I hit the ground, I'd wake up screaming, crying, mom. This is what I'm seeing in the vision. Is this reoccurring dream that I had as an 11 year old boy. I wake up, it's just, a, it's just a nightmare. Just go back to sleep. We didn't really have any wisdom at all back then. I think we came out of the, the Catholic church where we were, were praying to idols, making repetitious prayers to Mary, you know? We're just sinning, <laughs> bowing down to idols and giving them our, our spare change. The Bible forbids all these things, and we did it because we were trapped in a religion. So I came up, we came out of all that anyways, but back to this dream, and oh, every time I would I wake up screaming, then in the vision, I'm watching the vision, I see myself jumping out of this couch. I was seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above all these things. I was seated with Him above the earth realm, above the death realm, and I... It was the world pulling me to come and see, to experience death of the world, the flesh, pride, all these, 
wicked things. And I did backslide after that when I was about 12 or so. And I came back to Lord as a, as a young adult. So I backslid. God was warning me in this dream. And then I see in the dream that if I would have fell and hit the ground and died, I would have died in eternity. I would have went to hell because remember those mirrors? Eternity. I would have chosen my own way and rejected Jesus Christ to have my own plans and my own way is to serve myself. I was my God, not Jesus. And so I jump out of these th uh, the couch, heavenly places in Christ, because I was a young believer as a young boy, and I saw his hand there. He caught me before I fell into eternal darkness, and he caught me. You know what hit me? The spirit of the fear of the Lord. It wasn't that I was terrified of God. I was terrified at his mercy. I was, I was so scared that what if God moved his hand away and he just let me fall into utter darkness for eternity? Like those people who say to him in that day, did I not do this? Did I not serve you as a young boy? And he'll say to me, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you, you doer of your own thing. Don't let any preacher lie to you and say that we all go to heaven. That is not what Jesus taught. He's coming for those to ever believe in his name and surrender their lives to him. To them, he gave power to become the sons of God. If you sow to the flesh, you'll reap the flesh. If you sow to destruction, you'll reap destruction. You sow to the Spirit, you'll reap the Spirit. Ah, what does it mean? Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved, right? It's as simple as that. But what about sanctification? What about walking in holiness? What about, you know, those who are lukewarm, I will spit them out of my mouth. But, you know, people don't teach that anymore. Because they want a fluffy gospel where where people where everything's fine and you can just live the way you want, sin all you want, flip a God forgive me prayer and it's done. I thought that way. God corrected me. If you if you're spit out of the mouth of Jesus, that means you've left the body of Jesus. Outside of the city are the sorcerers, the liars, the dogs, the cowards. If they're outside the city, that means they can't go into the city. You shall never go in because everything that's outside, it loves to make a lie and oh, all the wickedness. So we need to get our lives right with God. Paul had it right. He said, it's no longer me living, but it's Christ living through me. Test yourselves to, to see whether you are in the faith. Do you not know that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. I don't say these things to torment you. I say these things to warn myself because this is about the spirit of the fear of the Lord, which is pure, is it not? I would have been lost for eternity, but I saw his hand catch me and the fear of the Lord hit me. The fear of the Lord was a shock at how kind he is. All I had to do was move his hand. I would have been lost for eternity. I was so thankful that God is merciful. I know what happened to me when the fear of the Lord hit me. I ran out of my house. I went banging on all the doors of my neighbors and I told them to go to church. I didn't know that I could lead them to Jesus. I was a brand new believer. I ran, all my neighbors, I banged on their door and I told them to go to church. God is real. Because <laughs> man, you don't, when you see something that at that level and it's burned in you since a childhood, it, it, it does something to you. It affects you. And you know what? I fear God after that. I can't just go out and get drunk and flip a God forgive me prayer because what if I die Well, from alcohol poisoning? What if I die in my sins? Anyways, that was I think that was the third time. Uh, I love the spirit of the fear of the Lord. It is pure. You know, I just pray for you that you would, if Jesus rejoiced in the spirit of the fear of the Lord, we should rejoice in the spirit of the fear of the Lord. It's written in Isaiah 11. 
that uh, he did. Let's let's read that real quick, and then uh, we'll just see if the Lord wants to do anything else here. If I can even find the Bible on this thing, <laughs> uh, Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11. Let's let's read about what Jesus rejoiced in. <laughs> My Bible says, I guess it's opening up the Bible, pro NIV, okay, here we go, Necessarian Vineyard. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. Uh, from his roots, a branch will bear fruit. That's the branch, the Lord Jesus Christ. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. If you want the spirit of the Lord to rest on you, the spirit of the fear of the Lord will rest on you. But look what it says. Uh, he will not judge by what he sees with his eyes. He's not going to judge by the flesh. Or decide what he hears with his ears. Rumors. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy. The needy. That means by the spirit. All righteous judgment is done by the Holy Spirit. Not by the soul. With justice he will uh, give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb and the leopard lie down with the goat and the calf and the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, and their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw with the ox. Where is it? I don't know where it says that. He rejoiced in the Spirit of the Lord. But anyways, that's what the Spirit, the fear of the Lord rested on Jesus. And if you want the fullness of Jesus, we will have the Spirit of the fear of the Lord resting upon us as well if you want to be like Jesus I know I do but this is this is a really good promise right here in that day the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples the nations will rally to him and his resting place will be glorious in that city the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the surviving remnant of his people from Assyria the lower Egyptian oh uh, Spirit, I don't know where it is. Well, it's somewhere in the Bible, anyways. <laughs> anyways, that's my video on the Spirit of the Fear of the Lord. There's more to it, but I just is just a condensed version, or else it's going to be five hours long. So maybe one day I'll make a five-hour video. <laughs> I made a seven and a half-hour video. I was going to make a ten-hour video. I ate a scroll in the spirit, <laughs> and I had so much in my spirit, I just had to release it. And I made a seven and a half-hour video. I can't even remember what I called it. Something about uh, kingdom revelations or something. I don't remember. Anyways, I'll see you guys on the next video. Cheers.